Well, that's terrible. Say, Sam, keep your mind on your work, will you? Oh, what's the matter now? Nothing much. It seems the entire band's out of tune, all except you. Yeah? Why are you always picking on me? Mm. When you know I can outplay anyone in the band. That's just the trouble. You not only can, but do. Well, come on now, let's see if we can all do it together just once. Oh, uh, why can't we quit now? No use getting too good. There's no danger. Say, that guy makes Sitting Bull look like a man of action. Oh, I could play it asleep. Well, come on, let's go. Hey, I wonder where Rudy is. Who cares? He's such a bum sax player, he's no worse anyhow. Gee, if he could only play like he can sing. Here he comes now. Well, hey, what's hey, the hey, big Rudy, idea? Where you been? Are you, Rudy? You're a half an hour late, Rudy. If we were paying salaries, I'd be tempted to dock you. I'm sorry, but I was waiting for this to arrive. Look, it's a brand new, gold-plated, super-toned, deluxe Ted Grant saxophone. Listen to these low notes. Sounds like he's giving himself the bird. <laughs> that bird reminds me of Fritz Chrysler. Chrysler's no saxophone player. Neither is he. Ah, oh, quit your kidding and let's go. We've wasted enough time already. And let's play it slowly so we can hear those low notes. <laughs> How'd you like that? It was great, wasn't it, boys? Yeah. 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 Well, I've certainly got to hand it to you, Rudy. But where did you learn to play the saxophone like that? Yeah, you weren't playing like that six months ago. I got it from studying with the greatest saxophone player of all time, from Ted Grant. You mean that, uh, that mail-order guy? Sure. Why, he discovered Ben Burney and Ted Lewis. I read all about it in his ads. Do you believe everything you read? Never mind. He's a remarkable man. Why, it's his influence that made me practice hours every day. He's a great guy, all right. Why, well, say, he's got one of the biggest band organizations in the country. And if we could only hook up with his outfit... Ah, uh, do you mean to say a man like Ted Grant would be interested in a small-town outfit like this? Why not? Why, he's almost a personal friend of mine. Just see the way he writes to me. Read that last paragraph. And in concluding this course, let me tell you that at all times I shall follow your work as my pupil with heartfelt interest and hope that you will bring your problems of the future to me as an old friend. Cordially, Ted Grant. Imagine it, following the work of all his pupils like that. And that isn't all. Read this. Mr. Grant has rented a home in the smart summer resort of Longport, Long Island, where hereafter he will spend his idle hours scanning the work of his pupils as received by mail in the hope of finding promising material for the many profitable positions awaiting the graduates of the Ted Grant correspondence method. Well, it sounds all right, but how are we going to get to him? I have it. We'll jump a train to Longport, go right out there and see him personally. And get thrown out? Oh, he wouldn't treat a graduate of the correspondence course that way. Why not leave it to me as leader? I know the man. We'll take our instruments, our clothes. We'll go out there and play for him, and I know he'll sign us right up. Silly girl. 
Now listen, Ted. About next week's work. Work? Say, give me a rest, will you? You're wasting your talents managing me. You ought to be managing a war. Oh, now, see here, Ted. You have any right to talk to me like that. Why, well, you don't appreciate the management that I'm giving you. Doubling in two shows with your radio dates and your nightclub work, and now the best money-making proposition that we've had yet. The Correspondent School of Music. Yeah, and running me ragged with it. Me, the greatest living band leader. The man who made America jazz-minded. The man who discovered Ben Burney, Ted Lewis, the Six Brown Brothers. Yeah, you left out Sousa. Well, I'm too tired to think. Why should a man of my ability have to remember who he discovered? No reason at all. So you put out a lot of newspaper publicity about this Longport house. That's caused me more annoyance than 24 hours not getting a whole season in town. Phone calls and telegrams from nut amateurs in every part of the country. Yeah, but don't you see? That's advertising the correspondent school of music. And you get 10% of the returns on that. And 100% of the troubles. I wish I'd never let my name to it. Since I moved in yesterday, I'll bet I answered that phone 40 times before I had the service cut off. They even come in person. Yeah, but listen, there's only one done that. Well, he's equal to 40 himself. Well, just keep on refusing to see him. He'll wear uh, himself out. And these people next door. This Mrs. Whitehall. I suppose she'll wear herself out. Yeah, but she hasn't called in person. No, but she called up three times and sent two messages. Will I play at her musical tonight? Out of neighborliness. Imagine me at a hick musical. What's that? Yogi will get it. Tell him I'm in bed with a smallpox. No, no. Yes. No, no. Yes, you I cannot will. come in there. I'm going to no, see him no, this no. time. Yes, I am. I'm not going to see him. Mr. Grant. Now what the blazes? You don't know me, Mr. Grant. Oh, yes, I do. You're the guy I've refused to see five times already today. Right now, it'll make an even half dozen. But I want you to listen to me. That is, to us. Now, wait a minute, kid. You can't expect Mr. Grant to match his time that's worth a thousand bucks an hour. Against yours, it's worth probably two bits a month. But, Mr. Grant, as one artist to another... Now, listen, son, it's no use. I'm not looking for any more musicians, and I wouldn't listen to another amateur band for Texas guy and herself. You don't understand. We've come all the way down from Waterville just to have you listen to us. Why, well, I'm a graduate of the Ted Grant Correspondence School. Throw him out, will you? Throw him out. Come on, come on. No, no argument now, kid. Outside. All right, Come on now. This is fair. Never mind. I'm a graduate of the Ted Grant Correspondence School. Open the door, you Come on. Yeah. All right, boy. What did he say? No. No. Well, what are we going to do now? I don't know. Oh, gee, Rudy. We've got to get in there. We've got to play for this guy. I tell you what let's do. There must be some way of getting in here. Oh, come on, boy. Let's get in there and set up and, and play for this guy. That's a good idea. Come on. He's got to listen to us. What are you saying? Oh, come, come on. Come on, Rudy. Sure, he will. He'll listen. Here. What's the idea? You and I are going back to town for a rest. Oh, now, say, listen, be reasonable. Reasonable, my eye. I'm going to spend the next three days on Times Square where they don't read the other guy's publicity. Yogi, leave a note and tell him I won't be back till Tuesday. But you just moved in. Oh, shut up. Who's running this? Oh, come on. Yogi will drive us down whether I know amateurs, neighbors, or musicals. Or any other darn thing. Okay, boss. Well, so long. Go. All right, Stephen. That'll be all. Oh, Stephen. Stephen, don't forget my bag. Oh. Andy, dear. Who do you suppose they are? Why, oh, they're beggars. Gangsters. Oh, I call the police. I call the police.
say, there's nobody here. Maybe they're all upstairs. But don't you think we're kind of forcing ourselves on him? That's the only way. You brought us all the way down here to play for this bird, and we're going to play for him no matter. I guess you're right. You know, we're doing him a favor and giving him first chance to hear all this new talent. Well, if he's the guy you say he is, we oughtn't to have any trouble landing with him. Well, let's set up. I'll bet we'll knock him dead with this first tune. Okay. Hello, hello. Is, is, is this the police station? Oh, yes, well, I, I, I want to report a burglary. Yes. Ye yes. Ye yes. <clears throat> this is Mrs. Ethel Berto Whitehall speaking. Yes, Mrs. Whitehall herself. Yes. <clears throat> well, my niece uh, and myself saw a gang of strangers breaking into a neighbor's house. Yes. Yes, the house rented by Mr. Grant, the band leader. Yeah, why? Yeah, yes, you, you'll be right up. Oh, oh, yes, well, we'll be waiting. Oh, my dear. You remember that robbery of two weeks ago, you know. I, oh, my pearls. I don't remember what I did with my pearls. Mm, did I put them in the safe? Oh, my pearls. Here we go, boy. <laughs> There's nobody in any of these rooms. Guess you're right. The house is empty. W wonder who it can be. I'll see. Don't move any of you. Stand right where you be. Step in, Miss Whitehall. I got them cornered. That's right. These are the men, all right. Are you sure you recognize them? Oh, certainly I do. I saw them breaking in the side window not five minutes ago. Breaking in, eh? I suppose you know there's a law against housebreaking, young fellows. Law? Yeah, the last gang I caught got a year. We aren't housebreaking. Well, well, what are you doing with all this junk? Junk? Well, that isn't junk. Those are band instruments. I know they're band instruments. I suppose you know there's a law against stealing them, too, don't you? We weren't stealing them. We were we were playing them. Why, I'm I'm the leader here. Leader? Well, you better get ready to lead this bunch to jail, then. Don't you see, Andy? It's Mr. Ted Grant himself and his band. Oh, what nonsense! Mr. Grant wouldn't break into his own house, my dear. Uh, that was it exactly. Forgot his keys. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Grant? Why, yes, I I forgot my key. Yeah. Well, you don't look like any saxophony wizard to me. Oh, but he is. He's a wonderful saxophone player, isn't he, boys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except when he forgets the key. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're Ted Grant, let's hear you and this uh, this band play something on these instruments you're trying to get away with. Why, yes. Certainly. Come on, boys. Let's show them what kind of a band we really are. Yes, come on there. Uh, get busy. Come on. You have to show me. <laughs>
Grant. I'm so pleased to meet you. How could we ever make such a silly mistake? Oh, don't. Uh, don't apologize. It, it might happen to anyone. Oh, but you see, we are your nearest neighbors. And this, this is my niece, Jean. You mustn't mind Auntie. She so wanted to meet you. That's why she was so anxious to protect your property. Did you want to meet me? Oh, I've always wanted to meet Ted Grant. Well, then, that's who I am, all right. Oh, then you got my notes about the music, Al. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I got them all right. No, oh, and you'll come. Oh, Mr. Grant, please say you'll come. Where to? Why, to play at my musicale. Ah, you didn't answer me, but I shan't chastise you. Ah, I know you're going to come. Oh, imagine, imagine Mrs. Todd Hunter when she knows that Mr. Ted Grant is going to play for us. That's Andy's hated social rival. It does seem silly, but it's so important to her. Not at all, my dear, not at all. It's simply because I, 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 I resent very much the way Mrs... Mrs. Tata had Hunter acts on our benefit committee meetings. I trying to run the whole show and everything just because she knows a lot of opera singers. Oh, Mr. Grant, she's going to bring them with her tonight to my musicale just to show how important she is. Really, really, it, 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 it's too annoying. Yes, it, it certainly is. Oh, but Mr. Grant, if you would come to our little affair... And bring your boys with you. Then we could introduce you as our friends. Well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Todd Hunter. <laughs> oh, I mean Mrs. Whitehall. <laughs> we had originally intended to leave town on the six o'clock train. Hey, what's this? Well, it's just that tomorrow is Sunday and the first train doesn't go out till six o'clock. We thought that maybe... I mean this note. It says here, notice to tradesmen. Mr. Grant will wait till Tuesday. Please hold all deliveries. Oh. That. Yes, that. Says you'll wait till Tuesday. It's getting so you can't believe anything you read. Trying to kid the country cop, eh? Uh, uh, he means he was thinking of going and then changed his mind. Oh, and left this note on the door, huh? Why, yes, that's it. We were just thinking of going. Yeah. But you're not going now, huh? No, of course not. Why should we? <coughs> yes, uh, why indeed? <laughs> oh, then you'll be here for our musical tonight, won't you? Oh, yes. I guess we will. Oh, that's so good of you, Mr. Grant. Oh, imagine my party. Mr. Grant and his band to boot. Oh, Really, I'm eternally grateful. And so am I. We're... We're delighted, aren't we, boys? Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> I think you're very nice, Mr. Grant. We won't forget. Goodbye. Don't forget. The music is at 8 o'clock tonight. Goodbye. For the moment... Goodbye. Oh, and uh, Jean and I, I want you to know that we hope to see a great deal of all of you boys while you stay here. Uh, and I wish to tell you that uh, I, I, I don't care for grand opera. No, no, no. I'm too American. Too American. Jazz. Oh, I, I, I just adore jazz. I don't know. It does. It uh, kind of does something to me. Just an Indian. <laughs> just an Indian. Hey, buddy, don't forget I got my eye on you, you and your band, to boot. Hey, I don't like that to boot. What did you want to tell him that I was Ted Grant for? Well, I hate jails. They're so cold and damp. That was a deliberate deception, a lie. 
I hate doing a thing like this. <laughs> Don't hand us any of that. Say, when that girl said she was crazy about meeting Ted Grant, you began to look more like him than he does himself. I know it. I entered into this thing deliberately. That's why I feel so rotten now. What do you mean? I mean, we could have told the truth. We could have explained. Oh, uh, not to that cop. Oh, yes, we could. But I stood for it because, well, I wanted to make a hit with that girl. What? Yes. You see, I've always wanted to be a great orchestra director, just like Ted Grant. And when I saw how she felt about him, I let her go on believing I was him. And now, I've gone and balled up everything forever. No, you haven't, old boy. Tell you what we'll do. Now, we'll play at this trick party tonight because... Well, because we'll have to. Then we'll stay here until tomorrow and grab the 6 o'clock train tomorrow evening. Why, that cop can't stop us. Ah, uh, nothing to be as scared of. Not a thing. I almost feel it is your party, my dear. Oh, yes. It does brighten a soiree if one can count among one's guests a few of the people who really amount to something. <laughs> Yourself, for example, <laughs> dear Mrs. Sardhunter. So nice of you to say so, my dear. <laughs> I think the pianist is trying to catch your eye. Oh, oh, yes. I must now introduce some of the other singers. Don't tell me you, too, have some famous artists for us. Oh. oh, yes. Just the poor little orphans. I thought if they sang tonight, it might advertise them for our benefit uh, tomorrow. Oh, yes. It is difficult to make a program for these little musicals, unless one knows the right people. <laughs> Precisely, my dear. Precisely. <laughs> Friends, 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 friends. I wish to announce the next numbers. Some little children from the orphan's home. As you know, tomorrow sees the opening of our benefit performance for these poor children. A varied program each and every night for the next two weeks in the Garden Amphitheater, so graciously donated by Mrs. Todd Hunter. The Benefit Committee, of which I am chairman, hopes you'll buy a great many tickets and bring your friends, for it must be a complete success, or the orphanage cannot carry on their work for the year. <laughs>
cute, don't you think? I just love children, don't you? I guess our likes are pretty much the same. <clears throat> and uh, now, now, my dear friends, I wish to announce the final number. <clears throat> A very dear friend and neighbor of mine, Mr. Ted Grant and his famous band. <clears throat> they are here <clears throat> as my guests. Oh, boy. Funny, I've never met a girl like you before, interested in a thing like a charity benefit. And I've never met a man like you before. You're not at all the way I thought you'd be. Not a bit like a famous jazz band leader. And you're not the way I thought you'd be, either. I? Well, you couldn't have thought of me before. You didn't even know I was on Earth. Oh, yes, I did. I always knew that I was going to meet a girl like you someday. Why, the boys are playing a song that I wrote about that girl. I'm going to sing it to you right now. But we haven't secured our manager's permission. But suppose we secure permission. Well, I'm afraid a plain jazz band wouldn't be quite suitable on a program with real concert and operatic artists. Mr. Grants is hardly a plain jazz band. Well, I'm sure my operatic friends would view it as such. I know the artistic temperament. They would never consent to appear on a program which lacked artistic dignity. I'm quite right, quite right. So good of you to say so, Mr. Grants. You understand. Oh, Mr. Grant, I hope you're not offended. Not at all, really. Oh, but you have every right to be. She was so tactless, 
But I haven't finished with her, I can tell you. I shall place the matter to the committee and insist that you have the benefit program tomorrow night. And Andy will insist, too. You can be sure of that. But I don't want her to insist. She won't let you be insulted in her house. An orphanage benefit can't have too much dignity. No one can impose on Andy when she gets her back up. She'll do anything to get even with anyone who tries to injure her social prestige or make a fool of her. You don't say. If she's really angry, she'll do anything to get even with anyone. She's like one of those queens who chop people's heads off or sent them to prison for life. To prison? If they stand in her way, pretense is what Andy hates. I tell you, I wouldn't be the person to have her after me for anything in the world. She had her dressmaker fine $5,000 once for pretending to sell her imported models. And then there was that cook of ours who swindled us on the household accounts. She had him sent to jail. Yes, actually to jail. That's why I'm so glad she likes you. For she really does. Maybe I'd better go get him. It's getting near train time. It's all your fault for telling her he was Ted Grant. And he'd better be Ted Grant till that six o'clock train pulls out. That cop was around here again this morning. Yeah? Doing what? Asking questions about Rudy. He said the more he looked at him, the less he reminded him of a great band leader. My nerves are shot to pieces. Uh, and so are mine. All piped down. I got it, boys. Let's play that new love ditty he loves so well. That one called, uh, A Little Kiss Each Morning, A Little Kiss Each Night. Great idea. Okay, let's play it. Disappoint us as they 
It's almost half past five. Your car should be here almost any minute now. I wish you didn't have to go into town for that rehearsal. I wish I didn't, too. Oh, you've made me forget all about my music. I've always wanted to know a real musician, an artist with sincerity. Sincerity? That's what your music makes me feel about you. You just couldn't be anybody but yourself. Oh, when you sing like that, I wish you'd go on forever. Would you be willing to go on with me forever? Why, I... Pardon me. Is Mrs. Whitehall here? No, Adam. I have a telegram for her. Just leave it on the table. Now, I wonder what that telegram's about. So do I. It's funny that Andy hasn't come home. Something must have happened at her committee meeting. Say, we better go get that guy. You wait here. Will you be coming back tomorrow? If I wasn't, would you mind? What a silly question. I might have to stay in town, for instance. Then I come down and see you and hear you play. I'm going to be a Ted Grant fan. But supposing I wasn't Ted Grant? If you weren't famous? Well, I'd like you just the same. No matter who you were. Jean, I've got to tell you something. Maybe I'll make you hate me. But I've just got to tell you. I'm not what you think. I'm... I'm... Yes, I was, I was just going. Oh, thank heavens you haven't gone. It's very important. Why, Andy, what's happened? I won. They're at what? At the committee meeting, of course. Your band, your, your band uh, <clears throat> plays tonight. You mean Mrs. Todd Hunter can send to let Mr. Grant head the program? I should say she didn't. <laughs> and what a piece of my mind I gave her. <laughs> and the committee backed me up. Especially when I told him how anxious Mr. Grant was to help us. Well, of course, I did want to help. But with the other artists on the program objecting... <laughs> They're not on the program anymore. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> They've all motored back to New York. What? what? <laughs> if, if, exactly, my dear. She said that they refused to appear on the program with a jazz band, no matter how famous. And, of course, the committee insisted on having Mr. Grant. And she withdrew their names. <laughs> a complete triumph for me, I assure you. But, Andy, without the operatic stars, we can't make the benefit a success. The broadcasting people say that Mr. Grant will be a far bigger attraction. Why, most of the people will have heard him in New York many times. You mean they've heard and seen Ted Grant personally? Why, of course. They're your regular fans. You know, the ones you play for at the theater and the smart nightclubs. Oh, with the Davy Tant numbers, we'll be a great success. Oh, you will do the best you can for us, won't you, Mr. Grant? But I told you before, it's impossible. We'd have to secure our manager's permission. Oh, I've taken care of that with a wire direct from the committee meeting. We got your manager's address from the broadcasting people in New York, told them that you were here, wanted to help us, and offering to accept his turn. You said that I was here and that I wanted to play? Why, of course, and your whole band. That was right, wasn't it? The answer should be here by now. Why, that must but be... But, Jean... Uh, that must be what? That must Jean, be please... What? That, that must be what the butler was trying to find you for. What was the butler? What was he... Come on, come, speak up. What is it? Yes, come, come. Well, I... I really have forgotten. Well, then I'll see the butler. It must be the telegram. Excuse me. Why didn't you want Andy to read that telegram? Jean, there was something I wanted to tell you. But it's too late now. About the telegram? Read it. 
Why, it's addressed to Abby. It will concern you. Oh, I don't believe it. Read it. Band operating in your neighborhood is fake. Have wired police to arrest all concerned and hold till I arrive with Mr. Grant. Impossible, play your benefit. As cannot arrive till late evening. Jay Stein. Jean, I, I wanted to tell you. I was trying to tell you. You're not Ted Grant. No. You've been lying. Imposing on us. Oh, Jean, you don't understand. Let me explain. Why, what's the matter? What's happened? We saw the cops coming and beat it. How far is it to the station? It's a half mile across country. You mean me run half a mile? We'll never make that six o'clock train without a car. Then we're soaked. Well, I don't mind the bread, but gee, I hate water. Wait a minute. I'll take you in my car. What? We can still get out the back way. Oh, I can't let you do this. You can't be arrested in Abby's house. Boys, are we going to hide behind a woman's skirts? Sure. sure. Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Oh, Come on. Boy. Where are the criminals? Oh, oh, oh Officer Stuffle. Tuttle, what? Tuttle. Tuttle? Yeah, well, what is it? What, what's the matter? Oh, well, where are the crooks? They're, they're this Ted Grant fakesman, the bandsman, was, they're, they're, and his bunch of criminals. They, they went were, that way, sir. They were that doggone them. I'll get What? Crooks? Oh, Adams. Oh, I... I the crooks. Yes. Oh, yes. All right. I going to see you again. You aren't going to see me again. Ever. Oh, I know I've been to blame. It's been a terrible mistake that I'd give anything to undo. You better go. You'll miss your train. I'm not going until I know that you've forgiven me. Oh, have I hurt you so much? I don't understand. Why did you save us from the police then? Oh, I just couldn't see you punished that way. We'd have deserved it. You don't know Andy. She'd never forgive you. She'd make them give you a prison sentence. Oh, I don't care about her. I want you to know just how sorry I am. It isn't myself that counts. It isn't Andy's humiliation. It's something far greater than any of us. Something you and your friends have forgotten about. That's the real sufferer. What is that? The children of the orphanage. Why, what do you mean? Oh, you spoiled the whole benefit. Andy trusted you and counted on you. The other artists have gone back to New York. Grant won't arrive until much later, and there'll be no time to get anyone else to head the program this evening. I never thought of that. We'll have to return all the ticket money. What's left of the fund must go to the broadcasting people. It's hardly worthwhile giving the other performances. If this one is such a failure... What can I do? Oh, it's too late to do anything. You've had your joke at the expense of a great charity, the one we've worked so hard for. And because of your thoughtlessness, children will suffer. Well, I could never forgive you for that. Oh, Jean. I never want to see you again. Well, come on, the train's moving. Yeah, I'm not going. What? She's right about that benefit. Well, suppose she is. Are we going to miss this train? I am. Have you gone nuts? I'm going to go back there and offer the same player do anything that'll help. Why, you're crazy. They'll jail you. I don't care. I'm going to take my medicine. Oh, come on. Let's catch this train. Go ahead. I'll write you from the rock pile. Not me, you won't. Because I'm going to be right there with you. What? Do you think I'd let you take this alone? Why, I'm in this as much as you are. That's right. Boys, we're all in this together. In a fruity's game, let's stick to it. Oh, I can't let you all do that. Say, if it'll help them for us to play, we'll play. Let's get a taxi. Come on. Let's hey, walk. taxi!
Uh, pardon, Mrs. Whitehall. Stevens of the news. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Stevens? <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, who first introduced this imposter to your friends as Ted Grant? I did. I did. Oh, I see. Well, uh, when did you first notice your niece's romantic interest in him? When she ran away with the vagabond. Clark! Of the Herald. Where can we get a photograph of this niece now? I don't intend to answer any more questions. But you've got to. It's front page stuff. But my dear lady, we're giving you a million dollars worth of free publicity. Can't you just see it, boys, eh? Heiress elopes with the... What does she call him? Oh, vagabond. Anti-rages. Secret love nest. Her vagabond lover. There's a head for you. Yeah. Pardon me, Mrs. Whitehall. I met you with the Lathrops at Palm Beach last winter. <laughs> How nice of you to remember. Now in the interest of the police gazette. <gasps> might I ask you if your niece has ever been photographed in a bathing suit? Oh! What? <laughs> Go away! Go away! I don't intend to answer another question. Go away! Go away! Besides, boys, we're uh, not so sure she did run away with these crooks. Maybe they ran away with her, huh? Well, that's my theory. A kidnapping. Hot dog. Would you say uh, hypnotism had been used? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say positively, but uh, you might print the fact that uh, <clears throat> uh, Chief George C. Tuttle expects some startling disclosures within 24 hours. Uh, two T's and Tuttle. You mean an arrest? Boys, we're going to arrest these crooks and put them where they belong. Sure as my name's George C. Tuttle, attached to Levin's precinct. With two T's. <laughs> we'll show these city gangsters they can't perpetrate their outrages in this town. I followed them for days. Try to kid me, will they? Kid the country cop, eh? Well, you can't blame a man for trying. Now about that bathing suit picture, Mrs. Whitehall. Go away, go away. I shall speak to you. I shall say another word. <laughs> National Broadcasting Company, operating from the charity benefit at the Todd Hunter Estate at Longport, Long Island. Please stand by. Wait a minute, what's that? Why, they're announcing the charity benefit. Over the radio. Yeah, but I thought you said this thing was called off. Perkins hey, let's speaking. get this. In behalf of Mrs. Whittington Todd Hunter, I wish to announce the first performance of this monster benefit for the orphan's home will be broadcast in full over this station immediately. <laughs> Mrs. Todd Hunter wishes me to explain that due to an unfortunate misunderstanding with Mrs. Ethel Berta Whitehall of the committee, the operatic stars expected will be unable to appear. <laughs> Mrs. Whitehall promised to replace them with the Ted Grant band. But again, due to another unfortunate misunderstanding on the part of Mrs. Whitehall, this will also be impossible. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, I... The band, believed by Mrs. Whitehall to be the famous Ted Grant organization, has turned out in actuality to be a small group of amateur musicians who, however, rather than let the evening suffer by Mrs. Whitehall's error, have gladly contributed their services to the program. Wait a minute. That means the birds you want are right at the benefit now. And so's the niece. The nerve on them. I'll pinch the whole bunch. Do you mean to tell me that those young blackguards have had the impudence to appear at that benefit after what has happened? Well, that's what the radio's saying, ma'am. Oh! Oh! Adams! My car! What?
Can you beat that? Well, what do you think of that nut? Using the Ted Grant method. Stealing my stuff, huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get a load of that guy. Some of you to sneak around that way and come in underneath there where those fellows are. Okay, you get Chief. me? Come on, boys. Come on over here with us. And now the final number from our band will close the performance. No, I all the blame if you'll let the others go. Well, what will I do with him, ma'am? I intend to prosecute him to the full extent of the law for causing the failure of our benefits. I'll go quietly. Wait, Annie, wait. What do you mean, failure? Jean, where have you been? At the radio receiving telegrams. And before you say another word, I want you to look at those. What? What on earth? Uh... The radio announcer says they always get a quick response from their public. 
Oh, listen. If charity benefit is as delightful as the orchestra now playing, count us in every night. Mr. and Mrs. Richmond. Oh, my dear. The, 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 all the patients in our hospital enjoy the charity benefit orchestra greatly. Head nurse, Montclair Hospital. Oh, how sweet. Never heard such a soothing voice and band. I'm coming to benefit just to see them. Mrs. Roger Hackett. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Hackett's. <laughs> Hope that Rudy Brownson and his orchestra will be a permanent feature on the air. The Sherman family. Oh, my dear, this is too much. They say he's a hit. A radio sensation. They know it when they first heard him out there. Oh, there are tons of other telegrams, too. Oh, don't you see, Andy? He hasn't made your benefit a failure. He's put it over for you. Uh, congratulations, Mrs. Whitehall. It isn't everyone who has a genius to make a find like this and then exploit it so magnificently. Superb showmanship. Yes. The committee certainly owes a great deal to you. Oh, yes, yes. I recognize the quality of his voice the minute I heard it. So different to the trained operatic voices. Dear Mrs. Todd Hunter. Well, aren't you going to have him arrested? No, <laughs> no, no. No, no, not at all. <laughs> that was part of my superb... <laughs> superb whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, look at here. Just this Mr. Grant himself will advise us on this. He's the injured party. He made the complaint. Well, well, of course, Officer Fuffle. Uh, if... Tattle, Tattle was too tea. Well... Pardon me, just a moment. Me? Make a complaint against my protege? Well, who are you? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Why, I'm Ted Grant, that's who. And I want to tell you, I never was prouder in my life of any graduate of the Ted Grant School of Music. Why, say, listen, we're going to use his name and his testimonials in all of our future advertising. Yeah. Why, he's the biggest find I've made since Ted Lewis or Ben Burney. You, you've made? <laughs> well, of course, I'm Mr. Grant. I don't care to take any credit away from you, but you must admit that my courage and superb seamanship, the, this, the, sh whatever, the, my... The sh if you realize the effort it takes Developing new talent like this, you'd appreciate my feelings tonight what? when I heard this new find of mine. Find of yours? <laughs> Why, when I heard the boys sing at my musical, I knew yes. then that there was... And using the Ted Grant method, the method that's made me the greatest saxophone player in the world. Oh, saxophone player. Well, of course... Well, you ask my manager. Well, Why, the... really, Mrs. Toad Hunter? Toad Hunter? This is Mrs. Toad Hunter. Pardon me. I'm Todd Hunter. That's, that's all right. That's all right, that's all right girlie. It's all right with me. Listen, girlie. this boy plays the saxophone so well that, well, you won't believe me, but a couple of times I hated to ask him for my salary. Oh, my. You know? <laughs> 